Well, good morning once again. I got back a few days ago from the Rocky Mountain Wood Turning Symposium in Loveland, Colorado. The next one coming up for me and last one of the season is the Yellowstone Wood Turning Symposium. So if you're in Montana, in Billings, Montana, or Northern Wyoming or any place, you can uh, check that out and see Keith Gottschall. He'll be there for two days, I think October 8th and 9th. But anyway, today's topic, I'm gonna pick a hollow form and complete it. On my last video, I did um, a rough turned lidded box and completed that. And I thought a good follow up might just be to complete one of the many hollow forms I've got uh, laying about and finish that. Now in this video today, you're gonna to probably see this tool, and I'll give you some close-ups of that later on when I use it. That's a Cindy Droz the tool, and I've had my eye on this for quite a while. It's a negative rake scraper for the opening of boxes and that sort of thing. It's gonna be perfect when I do, for example, an insert in one of my hollow forms. So I'll show you a little bit more of that later. If you buy a Cindy Droz the tool and they are Excellent. She knows tool steel. She's an excellent, obviously excellent wood turner. So they are profiled in such a way and sharpened, ready to go. Uh, there's nothing you need to do with them. So we'll look at that more. And let me just unpack some of these and I'll show you what we're going to do today. I'm going to have to pick one of these. Now let's take a look at some of the hollow forms I have in this box. I suspect a lot of these are box elder. Here's one that I've got a little bit of uh, epoxy and uh, aniline dye filling some voids in there. That's not a bad one. Here's a nice walnut hollow form and I've actually got a threaded insert in the opening and I've even got it threaded so that's really ready to go, and I probably have this trued up. I want to find one that's out of balance. There's a nice one, and I really would like to do a little bit of coloring. And I'm really inclined to pick this one right here, so let's uh, set that aside. Now my problem is I forget what I have in these boxes. Here is a hollow form. Whoop. It's threaded. I've got the lid threaded. I've got a finial sitting here all ready to go in there. I started this in a demonstration. I think it was the Utah Wood Training Symposium. And that's ready to go. So I need to keep in mind that that thing is in here. Here's another nice one. That's a little bit different shape and I'm not sure. I might just do this one. You might hear Coco. Well, I got Coco in here and she's making all kinds of noise, so she's going to have to do without her ball for a second. This is a nice walnut hollow form. I'm going to pick this box elder hollow form right here and I'm going to do some coloring. And maybe at the very end of this video, I'll show you a bit of coloring. So the first thing we need to do is true it up true the tenon up and put it in a chuck and do any kind of final shaping on this that we need to do. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this between centers and I'm going to true up the tenon. I may not do a lot on the outside at this point. I just mainly want to true up that, that spigot. So I need to take that down to the size of the opening. Now what I'm going to do is just take this down and make a male tenon that will fit into my opening. And I'll put a little bit of a taper on that. Now eventually what I'm going to do is rechuck this when I finish it, and I'll probably have a different kind of a fixing on that that's more secure. So I've got a tenon formed on this that'll fit the opening of my hollow form. 
I've got the live center all ready to bring up there. It's a little bit out of balance. Not bad. So I'll true up that tenon first and then reverse it. Okay, now I know what chuck I used to initially turn this piece and what I want to do is take off as little wood as possible so I can use the same chuck in the same set of jaws. So I've got uh, actually one of Cindy Drozda's detail gouges right here and I'm going to just true that up Alright, now I'm going to take my pencil, make a mark on that, and that will tell me if I'm trued up. And it's a very nice continuous pencil line, so I'm going to find my chuck and reverse this, and we'll fine tune the outside of that. Now I'm using a Vicmark 120 scroll chuck. We'll tighten that in there, and I'm going to just uh, firm it up just a little bit, and I'm going to turn my lathe on. That's trued up uh, very nicely, actually. And I suspect that I had at one time put this back on the lathe and trued it up, because it's running really very true. It's, it's a little bit out of balance. Uh, but I do need to work on the finish on the outside of that, a little bit on the opening, and it's probably a little bit thick. It's probably uh, 5 eighths of an inch thick in some spots, I would suspect. So we'll do a little bit of work on the inside of that. So I'm going to just firm this up a little bit more. Now I've removed my tailstock because right now we don't need it on there. And I'm going to take a good measurement with my depth gauge. And the nice thing about this one is I can lock this bar in. So I'm going to put a mark on the depth of this. Right there. And I'll just take that mark and continue it around the outside of my pot. There we are. Now there's a better view with my pencil line right here. So I've got a good half inch from the pencil line to this point right here. And I may not need to incorporate any of that thickness from my spigot into my hollow form. But along the way I've got to do a little bit of thinking about how I'm going to finish this foot down here and how narrow that's going to be. I think right now this is too wide. So I'll probably have that a little bit narrower. All right, now we're going to do a little bit of work on the outside and true that up. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here and work my way down. Okay, now the cleanest cut to make on this is from the high point down towards the narrow spot right here. So I'm going to take a spindle gouge that I know is well sharpened. And you can see that it's uh, running a little bit out of true. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is true up this area right here. Now you can tell by the sound of my tool on the wood that it's just a little bit out of balance, although it's not too bad. And you can really tell when I start getting a nice cut in here that it does get trued up and you won't hear that knocking on the wood anymore. Okay, 
I'm actually not very thick up here and you can almost hear how thin I am. I probably got a quarter of an inch down to about here so you can kind of tell by the sound that I'm bouncing a little bit on the bevel back here. It's still out of true so I'm going to come back in here and do a little bit of work. I have a little bit of torn grain in here and it's just about gone so I'm going to keep working my way up to the center of this vessel. Probably at this point you're getting the idea so I'm going to either eliminate some of these clips or fast forward through them and we'll move on to the next step. Yeah, I like that surface a lot. It looks pretty good. I'm going to just continue all the way around to the bottom of this. And after I've made a push cut, I'm coming back with a shear scrape with my handle lowered way down like that. And that'll just take off any of those little uh, ridges in there for my tool marks. Now I'm going to bring my microphone right down here and tap on this vessel and you can kind of hear how thin it's getting. That may not be very scientific but it's a pretty good indication of the wall thickness and I'm I'm getting down there. I'm a little bit thicker right in here so I will continue with that. Now I've also gone to a little bit bigger tool. This is the Doug Thompson 5 8 inch spindle gouge. It's a little heftier. I put a new sharpen on it, so I'm going to work my way around to the bottom of this vessel. Now this part of my vessel is still just a little bit out of balance, so I'm cleaning that up and truing up the surface with a draw cut, which is really a scrape, and then I'm going to make one or two final passes with a push cut as close as I can get down to my chuck jaws. All right, now you probably couldn't see that cut, but my first objective is to make a push cut down through there and not have any torn grain and I'm in pretty good shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take my spindle gouge and level off some of these ridges in here. And I think I'm good to go. Now you can probably see some ridges right along here. And there's really no torn grain, but I'm going to just take my spindle gouge and do some shear scraping on that. Now before I clean up the inside of this vessel, I'm going to do a little bit of work on my opening and true that up because I'm going to put an insert in there and I'm going to use my brand new Cindy Drozded negative rake scraper. There's the top of the tool. It's got a very shallow angle on the top and there's a view of the end. Let me turn it this way, you might get a better, there you go. So that's the bottom of the tool. And a pretty sharp angle right here on the left side, and a fairly sharp angle here on the nose of that tool. Now I ordinarily use my Doug Thompson square end scraper right here, works fine. This tool is going to offer me a little bit more control. 
Let's try this out. I'm going to set this just a little bit above center. And because this area right here is taken away, that heel is not going to contact my vessel at all. So I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to just work on that just a little bit. Alright, that's not too bad. Now this area right here, this flat spot is really important because when I get my lid done, it's going to contact that area right there. So that's got to be nicely trued up. Like one more pass on that right in here. And you can see how little that's taken off. It's just taken off a whisper of wood. All right, I think I'm okay. Now on to the inside. Okay, now I'm set up with a stabilizer made by Trent Bosch. I've got one of his hollowing tools in here. I've got the bent tool right now, 5 8 inch bar. And I'm really okay right to about here from the opening down to here. So I'm going to just Take a little bit more off going down in here, not a lot, but I want to mainly make sure that my wall thickness is the same all the way down through there. I intend to dye this from the inside, so it's important that it's a little bit thin. So here we go. And I'm turning this about 500 RPM, not very fast. Now I do have two videos on the stabilizer that I'm using right now and you can check those out. You can search my channel for a link to those videos. Now I'm going to carefully measure this with my wire gauge here and I don't really have a lot to take off down there so I'm going to check this as I go along. A little bit thicker right down in here and I think what I'll do is do some of this turning off camera because you can't really see what I'm doing and that's pretty thick right down there at the bottom so let me do just a little bit more turning on this on the inside and then we'll go to the next step Okay, my next step in this process was to make an insert and put it into the opening of my hollow form. This will be an urn. And I've done some thread chasing. I'm just about done with this. I need to do just a little bit more thread chasing. And I'm not going to go into much detail here because I've got a bunch of videos on thread chasing. And if you made it this far in the video, I have cut out a lot of some of the scenes where I'm just uh, kind of turning the outside of this form. Anyway, let's uh, do a little bit of thread chasing. I'm going about uh, 270 RPM. I'm, I'm just about there. So I'm going to just kind of take off a little bit more from my threads. using a 16 TPI thread chaser. And I've also got my lid and finial. This is a piece of Mopani and let's just see how that fits in there. And it's always nice to see how true that runs. It's running very nicely. So 
The next step, and I'll probably do a lot of this off camera, is to make a screw chuck and put this in there and turn my finial out of this piece of wood. Now the last thing I'm going to do here is just uh, clean up this surface right here and make it level across there. I want this whole thing a little bit concave. So I'm going to use my point tool. Now there's no better tool than this little point tool for doing this sort of delicate work. And you can see by the shavings I'm getting from that, that it's really much more of a cut. But I'm not sure what other tool I would use when I'm doing this and it really comes in handy. And it's also a very easy tool to make. And you can tell by the shavings I'm getting a very nice clean cut on that and on to making the finial. I am finally to a point where I can reverse chuck this and deal with the bottom of my vessel. I've got the finial all completed and I will give you a close-up of this. On the bottom of this I've got a screw chuck that I had on another lathe where I turned this finial and that's just a little bit of uh, black wood, a scrap. So I got my finial done, that's all ready to go. Now let me show you how I reverse chuck this. Now I'm going to take my vessel out of my scroll chuck and I have done no sanding to this point so I'm going to wait till that's reversed and do some sandings. So here's my live center, the one I used initially and the vessel will go in this orientation right here. Now I need something to drive this to make it turn. It can be something as simple as a dowel chucked up into the headstock of my lathe into some jaws or something and then this goes into my vessel. Now, I've got a fairly small opening here. It's probably uh, oh, seven eighths of an inch, I would suspect. That won't go in there. So I'm going to use this one here. This is just a threaded rod, and I'll show you how that works. And this goes into my vessel. I've got a bit of carpet underlayment right here, and that'll hit the bottom right in here on the inside. I don't want pressure on my insert and my threads. I want the pressure all the way down to the bottom. And if something happens, this is not going to fly off my lathe. And then right here, I've got a little wooden collar that's going to sit right there and stabilize the opening of my vessel. And I'll show you that when I set this up. Now, while I'm here, let me show you a couple other ones I've got. These are obviously for larger vessels. This goes inside of my hollow form and it's going to have a pretty big opening on there. I've got a stop collar right here. So that'll be the opening of my vessel, the bottom of my vessel, and I lock in that stop collar and I put this into the jaws of a two inch scroll chuck. Okay, there's one. Here's another one, the same setup. That goes into the bottom of the vessel. That's the opening of the vessel. I've got a stop collar, and this just threads onto the spindle of my lathe. Now, let me readjust things, and I'll set this up between centers. Anyway, I've got this threaded rod chucked up into my pin jaws right there. And I may adjust this a little bit uh, more later on, but for right now, I'm gonna just snug this up I don't need this real tight back here because I don't want to mess up the inside of my jaws. So I've got a little bit of carpet underlayment right there that'll help drive this hollow form and it also protect the bottom. Something else you can do is just put a little piece of wood on there, epoxy that on, and put some sandpaper right there and that'll help drive that. Okay, the next component of this setup is this little bit of wood right here. It's just simply a little turned cone that's going to 
contact the opening of my vessel. Now, I want most of the pressure right here. I don't want the pressure into the opening where my insert is. I don't want to mess that up. So I have carefully lined that up. I just need to bring these uh, two nuts up. And what I do is I've got two nuts right here that I simply tighten against each other and that will stop that cone right there. Now, let me show you one more important thing as we go along here. Now, before I set this up, I carefully line this threaded rod up to run as true as possible. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to adjust this a little bit more right there. I do need that little cone contacting, but I don't want to put a lot of pressure on that. That looks pretty good right there. I'm going to bring my tailstock up. And I've got other videos showing this. If you look in my hollow form videos, I'm sure I show this someplace. So bring my tailstock up. And that's running very true. So what I'm going to do next Take a couple crescent wrenches and I'm going to tighten these two nuts against one another. So I'm going to bring my tailstock up, tighten that up just a little bit more, turn my lathe on. It's wobbling just a little bit, but that's okay. That's good enough. I can reach this entire thing when it gets time to sand that. All right, now off camera, I check this very carefully as far as the depth. Right here in this area, I probably have a half an inch to five eighths of an inch. It's fairly thick right here. Now what I want to do is take off this wood right in here and blend it in to this point. And I need to take that wood off and I think I've got plenty. As far as the thickness at this point, it's about right there. And what I need to do is reduce the size of the foot down here that it's going to sit on to about this diameter. That's probably two inches or so. So I'm going to just blend this all in and reduce the height of this tenon. I don't want that tenon to be sticking out there. So let me grab a tool. All right, so I've got a little quarter inch bowl gouge. Now I'm turning my lathe about 650 RPM. And the nice thing about this setup is I can take this off, measure the bottom of my vessel, and make sure I don't make this into a disaster. Now, I measured that once again as far as the depth of this vessel. And I'm getting a little bit worried, so I'm going to try to leave a little bit more depth right here on this foot. So I'm going to just try to blend that in. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is take a detail gouge and take this little nub down to a smaller diameter. I'll do some sanding and I'll show you the finished vessel 